that. All right, we are ready to get started. My name is Shelley Roth and my company is Springboard Training. We're going to cover gender non-binary, gender spectrum, all the different things that people have questions about now and are confused about. And I'm a business person, so from my perspective, every business that is customer facing, which is most likely every business, needs to learn about gender non-binary, gender spectrum, using pronouns. Let me give you a little background on myself. Um, my company is has been around for about, gosh, 15 years, and for the last 13 years, I've been doing social media training and consulting, speaking and training companies how to use social media to grow their business. I also am a constant contact authorized Provi solution provider. I've been doing that since 2014. And gender non-binary training and consulting started in 2017 when I myself published my fourth book and came out as a transgender person. Um, all my books are on Amazon. My fourth book, Don't Call Me Ma'am, really tells my story. And all the profits from my training, uh, like today's training, and also the sale of my book go to an organization here in Houston called glbthomeless.org. They basically are chartered with going out and training people and educating families about gender and the LGBT spectrum. So if you want to learn more about them, you can go to glbthomeless.org, but all the money that I get from this work goes to the Association for Family and Community Integrity. Now the easiest way to find me is at ShellyRoth.com, that's Shelly with an E-Y, and if you'd like to join our Facebook diversity group, it is a private group and we do share information there. You also can sign up for my gender advocacy newsletter if you would like, that goes out monthly and usually has some good information. Um, you can visit my website, my Facebook pages, etc. cetera, um, from ShellyRoth.com. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to share with you the mission. My mission at Springboard is in line with the Center for Global Inclusion. Back in 2017, I got authorized with them and got permission to share their mission, which is in line with mine. And the bottom line is to create a better world, uh, contribute to the greater good in a world that's fair, respectful, and just for everybody, whether similar or different. Also to help companies get better at improving communication and performance. As an example, I just got off the phone right before this webinar with my my doctor's office and they proceed to call me ma'am. Again, my book is called Don't Call Me Ma'am. And I basically beg them to have on their intake forms what my pronouns are as well as my preferred name. So Companies have a long way to go to help improve or uh, communication and performance and sustain an environment that treats everybody fairly. And then, of course, my third mission is to raise money and awareness for the organization that I mentioned to you, the AFCI nonprofit organization. So with that, we are going to cover today um, definitions. The gender spectrum, you'll hear it called many things, as I'll talk about during our presentation. Basically, gender non-binary, the gender spectrum, gender fluid. I will share my story with you. I'll cover gender neutral pronouns and give you ideas on that as well, as well as some policy suggestions for your organizations. How to become an ally. We'll take Q&A throughout and also at the end. And there is a resource section that you will get when I send you the slides if you're registered for today's session. So let's start with some basic um, definitions. And back in 2007, which is quite some time ago, Newsweek had a cover. And Newsweek is a publication here in the United States. 
but they had the cover, The Mystery of Gender, and they started questioning, what is gender anyway? Is it more than just physical characteristics? They said that history and science were suggesting that gender is different. Gender identity is much more complicated than biological birth sex. Gender identity is separate from sexual orientation and different from our biolo biology. And then, of course, gender in the United States has historically been male or female, binary, if you will, based on what we see. Let's fast forward. 10 years from then, now we're at about 12 years, and National Geographic came out with an entire issue dedicated to gender. It was called Gender Revolution, and Katie Couric actually did a TV special. You can find it on demand, and they did an excellent job, and they really took a deep dive into what is gender anyway. So we've really come a long way but we also have a long way to go, and that's why I'm doing this work now. Now, the basic gen, uh, definition of gender, which I'll kind of skim over here and read, but either of two sexes, male or female, especially when considered with reference to social and cultural differences rather than biological. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go through, because a lot of the definition of gender is based on society and culture. As we'll see, there's different cultures that have different genders. So the term is also used more broadly to denote a range of identities that are just not male and female or based on the binary. Basic definitions, sex or biological sex is assigned at birth, and it's based on the anatomy that is seen when the baby is born. Gender identity is something that is assumed and assigned at birth based on the baby's sex. So that really, I think we'll see the changes come across that you might be able to assign a biological birth sex, but gender identity comes along later as the baby gets older. And gender is something that doesn't always match the assigned biological sex. Gender identity can be on a spectrum, or again, different terms, gender expansive, or non-binary, or gender fluid, or gender queer. You'll hear all of these terms to identify the gender spectrum. Sexual orientation is your sexual preference, and it's usually something confirmed in adolescence. We'll go into a little bit more detail on all of these. And lastly, we'll talk about gender expression. Gender expression is how one presents themselves. Now, biological sex, when you when your biological sex matches your gender identity, the term that is used is cisgender. You are binary and you are cisgender. And that basically means that biologically a female, gender identity woman would define you as a cisgender woman. A male, biologically born as a male, gender identity man would be a cisgender male. Now, gender expression can be on a spectrum as well. You could be born biologically a female and gender female, but your gender expression, how you present yourself, could be on a spectrum. You might be going to a softball game and you wear a baseball cat, cap, so you're cisgender, but your gender expression, how you're expressing yourself in your clothes, maybe your mannerisms could be on a spectrum and could be more male. So know that gender expression is another category we'll look at. So when we think of the gender spectrum, just think of it as fluid, not necessarily male or female, not binary, but across a spectrum. So we're biologically, generally speaking, biologically born in a male or female body with male or female anatomy, yet gender can be on a spectrum. 
Now, the majority of millennials do not want to be defined as gender binary. And the beautiful thing is, as the millennials start taking over and Gen, I think it's Gen Y after them follow, I think we're going to see a lot more with changes on how we address people, what is appropriate. So I'm pretty excited about that. And the survey they did with a thousand millennials found that half of them think gender is on a spectrum. So that's fascinating to me that it's changing that rapidly. Now you'll see, of course, that millennials make up over what 86.9 million and this is the US population for those that are here from um, overseas uh, coming in next of course are the baby boomers that's the category I'm in and then the Gen X are even um, those are right in the middle Gen X so pretty exciting to see that Millennials make up the largest segment and they do not want to be put in a binary gender box. Now, gender is something that's usually established by three or four when we start becoming aware of our, our bodies. And a cisgender person identifies their gender with the biological sex assigned at birth. So we're back to that. They are female gender or male gender born biologically female, born biologically male. And that is, they're not on a spectrum, that is their identity, they are cisgender. A transgender person like myself is just about the opposite. I identify outside of my birth sex. So I was born with biology, female bi uh, biology, and my gender identity is male. I am a transgender person. Now, those that are gender expansive or non-conforming or across the spectrum can be considered any of those terms, but they are definitely non-binary. They're not one or the other. They can be fluid. They can be across the spectrum. And I like this definition for, from the National Center for Transgender Equality. And by the way, as I go through this, you'll notice a lot of links that you'll be able to click on to go read more when I send you this presentation. But according to them, non-binary, genderqueer are labels that refer to people who don't identify with any gender or whose gender changes over time. It doesn't, it can be fluid. The word non-binary literally means someone whose gender falls outside of the male or female gender. As, if you have questions or comments as we go through, please do put them in the chat. I will check in on that um, in the next five minutes or so. Now, gender expression to me is pretty simple. It's how one presents themselves. It could be their behavior, their mannerisms, their speech, how they dress, how they wear their hair. And of course, gender expression can be on a spectrum as well. You might be going camping, so your gender expression might be leaning toward male. You might be going to um, play softball. So it really just depends on the person, but gender expression can be on a spectrum. This is Elle Fanning from a movie called Three Generations, where she plays a transgender male and you can see her excuse me there I'm going to use the pronouns we haven't talked pronoun yet but their gender expression is pretty much male in this picture really good movie I might recommend you watch that and if we use the old toy manufacturers good old Barbie and Ken we could probably and I'm going to make assumptions here but we're going to of course say their biological birthday suit is male and female. Their gender identity, I'm going to make an assumption that they are both cisgender. They were born biologically male and biologically female, and their gender identity is male and female, respectively. Versus them being on a spectrum or being non-binary, fluid, gender expansive. Their sexual orientation, again, I'm making assumptions about these Ken and Barbie dolls. Most likely heterosexual, but 
you never know, gay or lesbian, bisexual or asexual. And then their gender expression, I, I would say pretty much their hair and clothing is pretty much leaning to Ken is gender expression is male and Barbie is female. Although I would have to say Ken's shoes might be considered on the gender spectrum because they are certainly not way masculine. They might lean to, more toward the feminine side. So just to use two dolls to help us understand this gender spectrum stuff. Now, the definition of transgender is, describes people whose gender identity differs from their sex assigned at birth. So I was born, that is a picture of me, I was born biologically a female and my gender identity is male. Now, we could take somebody like Laverne Cox, who was born biologically a male, whose gender identity is female. And I will say that some transgender folks choose to have gender affirmation surgery. But I want to be very, very clear that gender affirmation surgery does not define a transgender person. It is not related to having or not having affirmation surgery. I am transgender. I have not had surgery or had taken hormones. That is totally a choice that the individual person makes if they want to go through surgery, which can be incredibly painful, expensive, and dangerous. Now, one of my new heroes is Asia Kate Dillon, an actress here in the United States. Um, they were most recently on uh, John Wick. They've been in Orange is the New Black, and they're on Billions. And I just love, love, love this quote because this is exactly what I believe. We all have an assigned sex. A gender identity is placed on top of that. I don't need to change my body in order to be valid as a non-binary or as a trans person. And I relate to that because in a perfect world, I would love that we all could be that, not have to go through surgery. But there's a lot of folks that feel they need to do that to help with their gender dysphoria, which we will talk about here in a moment. Oh, and by the way, MX is a new... Um, I forget what what you call that, honorarium? I, no, I don't know if it's an honorarium, but and if anybody knows out there, please let me know. But instead of Mr., Miss, Mrs., you can use Mix, MX. Uh, it was just added to the Oxford English Dictionary. And I included Asia Kate Dillon's, their uh, Instagram snapshot here. You can see that under their name, they use they, them, and theirs, as in, there they go with their bad self, I love them. So obviously her pronouns of choice are they, them, and theirs, which are mine as well. Now when we think about gender identity and having it be societal and cultural, there are many different societies that have different genders. The Native Americans have a third gender called two spirits. So gender can be fluid, non-binary or gender expansive refers to people whose gender identity and gender expression is different from what society expects from the binary, the male or female. I know I've talked about this a couple times, can't talk about it too much because it takes practice and understanding to get this. There's many cultures that recognize more than two genders, the Samoya culture, has a third gender called Fa'afin. It's a gender other than boy or girl. South Asia, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce these, but South Asia, Nigeria, Mexico, Thailand, Tonga, and even the United States in Hawaii, the Mahui people. There's a video you can watch on that population. So even in the United States, the Native Americans as well as the Mahui in Hawaii have a third gender. Now, the good news is we are getting a lot of mainstream exposure out there from, um, as you can see, the um, Vogue magazine was dedicated 
that's the first time I think um, that a person, a transgender person, in this case a transgender woman, was put on the cover of Vogue. Uh, so Laverne Cox was given that honor just recently. I think it was just last month. So that was pretty darn cool. And of course, Caitlyn Jenner, the Olympia, the decathlon gold medalist, had got a lot of exposure in the last few years. There's a really good series on the Amazon Prime channel, if you get that, called Transparent. The Poe series, Emmy-winning series, has a, had its second season. I just love that series. It's It just has a lot of transgender women that um, are actors on there on the FX channel. Of course, I mentioned Asia K. Dillon on Billions. National Geographic, we already talked about, Gender Revolution, as well as the Katie Couric special. You might want to check that out on the Nat Geo channel. So lots of mainstream exposure. Before we go a little further, I'm going to open up the chat box and see if we do have any comments um, or questions before I move on. And if anybody does want to make any comments or have any questions, feel free to do so now. I'll take a few seconds, take a sip of water while I'm waiting. All right, doesn't look like anybody does, so we'll go ahead and minimize that. So the interesting thing is they're starting to question, could gender be biological? Over the last couple of years, scientists are intrigued by that possibility that something actually is happening in the womb that impacts one's gender identity. They're questioning, is it possible that at some point in utero, when the baby's developing, that signals get mixed and the brain gets one set of instructions and the anatomy gets another? Oh, Dominic, thank you. I appreciate your input. Um, so maybe something's happening in utero, but one thing is clear, we as human beings, if there's ever a conflict between our brain and the anatomy, we know who's going to win. The brain's going to win. So this is a screenshot from the 2020 special where you see the baby in utero and the signals going to the brain are male, if you will, blue signals, male, but the signals going to the biology are pink. So they're starting to question this. This is fascinating. I hope that they uncover something before I leave the earth because that'd be really cool to identify. It would help a lot of people understand better and validate. So we're going to do an exercise. Just take out a piece of paper, if you will, just any kind of paper and a pen or a pencil. And I would like you all to draw or write something, a flower, a house, write your address, your profession, your favorite food, just something very simple because we're only going to take a few seconds. Okay, probably everybody has done that. Just go ahead. And now what I want you to do is I want you to use the opposite hand and draw or write the same exact thing. So right-handed folks, I want you to use your left hand. Left-handed folks, use your right hand and do the same exact drawing or writing. Okay, and if everybody could let me know in the comments section, how did that feel to draw or write with your non-dominant hand. If you could give me some words or phrases that may, how you felt and just put them in the chat box. And if you don't have any, I certainly have some from, uh, I've done this class many times for companies and nonprofits and for the public like we're doing right now. So any comments? I'll share with you some words that I've heard over the past. Difficult, unnatural, unbalanced, funny, strange, awkward, very unusual, unexpected, got a couple comments, 
odd. Yeah. Good exercise to feel what that like. So now I want you to listen to what my colleague Hannah Simpson had to say. Hannah is a transgender woman and she likes to I'm going to just quote her. I compare being transgender to handedness. How do you know you're right handed or left handed? No one tells you. You're not born with a mark on your hand that tells people what you are. You just know. When you put something in the wrong hand, you know it feels wrong. It's not right. That's how gender is. And I can attest to Hannah's statements. This is so true. But when a trans person's walking around the world, in the gender they're not, they know it feels wrong. They just know. And when they live authentically, it's like picking up a pencil in the right hand, or she should say in the correct hand. It feels good. It feels natural and organic and right. If you want to learn more about Hannah, you can go to hannahsimpson.net. But I just love this description because I could say that is exactly what it's like. Now, lots of folks, including myself, that are transgender have, or even gender spectrum folks on the, on the spectrum, have gender dysphoria. And it's basically a conflict between a person's physical or assigned gender, if you will, and the gender in which he, she, or they identify. People with gender dysphoria can be very uncomfortable with the gender they were assigned sometimes described as being uncomfortable with their body or being uncomfortable with expected roles of that gender. I threw this one in there because I still think it's kind of fun. Um, this is also a description of what it feels like to be transgender. Sometimes the wrong label ends up on the wrong product. There's nothing wrong with the label. There's nothing wrong with the product itself. They just don't match because a mistake has happened. Yet, at the end of the day, the part that matters is what's inside the can. No amount of denial, stubbornness, or therapy are going to make those carrots turn into peas. So I kind of thought that was a fun way to describe what it might feel like to be transgender. Now, with that, I'm going to share my story and how I ended up at this stage of my life. Since I've been a business person most of my life, um, I'm going to share that with you now. Now, all of my life, basically, uh, when I knew what my real gender was, I suppressed my gender identity. Because, and living when you live a lie, needless to say, it's very frustrating. It made me angry. It made me feel like I didn't belong, that I wasn't equal. And needless to say, that created gender dysphoria. And I just realized I didn't share my, my story with you and, and how I even got here. So I'll do that quickly. I started off um, in education. I was a teacher, guidance counselor, and principal in Pennsylvania, tired of being poor, sold everything I had, and moved down to Houston, Texas, wow, 35 years ago. And with that, I knew that I wanted to make some money because I wanted to travel the world. So I started in the School of Hard Knock Sales, and I ended up it with some very uh, Fortune 500s, very reputable companies selling, always in sales for these technology companies. And I did that for a good 20 years, and I was very successful doing that. But then I got fired from the last big technology company I worked for. And at the time, I was boohooing and crying, of course. But it was the best thing that ever happened because I'm an entrepreneur at heart. And I started my own business. And so for the last 15, uh, actually 13 years, I've been so doing social media training for businesses, teaching them how to use these tools to grow their business, and also helping them with uh, email marketing. I'm a constant contact representative. So that kind of gives you a background so that you see how I got where I got. So with that, with my gender identity, I just came out a few years ago, and I'm going to share that story. But to tell you the truth, I feel six feet two with a buff male body. But when I look in the mirror, of course, I see a female body staring back at me and a five two body, five inch foot, two inch body staring back. And my daily interactions with people, such as the, the uh, 
the female on the phone I was talking to, she was misgendering me as well. And it brings me back to the reality that I am not, I don't look like that six foot tall buff male body, but I sure do feel that inside because that's my gender identity. I love this picture of the beagle looking in the mirror. This picture, this uh, painting is entitled Self-Portrait. And of course, they see themselves as that German shepherd. So that could be me. I actually had this artist paint a picture of me looking in the mirror, but the picture of me looked look too much like the buff body because <laughs> I have very short hair. My gender expression is male. But what most people think I am and have thought they see when, when I've been doing classes for a very long time and trainings on social media is, of course, a tomboy. Some people think and, and make the, the assumption that I'm a lesbian. Some people make the assumption that I am a female. But the bottom line is, folks, don't assume. Thank you, Snapchat. I was able to put a filter on my face. And sometimes what you see is not real for that person. I'm a transgender person. And if it was as easy as a Snapchat filter, believe me, I would transition that quickly. So I was born in a biological body that did not match my gender identity. That is a picture of my brother and I in the corner. And being in the wrong body, now when I was little, I was too little to know that, but as I grew older, I was very uncomfortable physically and mentally. I ha had and still have gender dysphoria. And as I became aware of this conflict in my mind and body, I became extremely introverted, very unhappy, and needless to say, I had a lot of anger. My parents, even though I loved them dearly and treated, they treated me wonderfully, they called me a miserable soul because I have to tell you, they were right. I was not a happy person. I had no idea why. So here we have some more pictures of me on the left-hand side. Those are my two brothers, and that's me with a short pixie haircut, as it was called at the time. In my mom always had me in dresses. There I am hugging my best friend with bows in my hair, and there's a blow-up skirt. So unhappy with all that. I was never really comfortable, and the older I got, especially heading in my teen years, I had zero confidence. I was incredibly shy, and I had it made up that I was stupid because I, I knew something was wrong but had no idea. I was unhappy, and I was angry. I was basically born in a body that I didn't relate to or identify with. Yes, that is me, and wouldn't you know that God gave me this incredible body long silky hair and I want you to notice when you see my pictures of me with this long hair they're always covering my breasts I absolutely hated 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 my breasts they were foreign objects all I really wanted was a crew cut and a male physique but at the time who knew nobody talked about what a transgender person was or the gender spectrum so it was a very unhappy good-looking in quotes girl to do and by the way, that's my fiance. Well, Miss Roth got betrothed. I'm going to let you digest that and look at that little news article from 19. I can't even see the date. 70? Wow. Amazing. Yeah, so Miss Roth got betrothed to a very handsome guy. Still friends with him today. I feel bad for him that he... We didn't know what was wrong, but notice that hair again, always covering those breasts. Now, anytime I had an opportunity, and still to this day, when I can um, do something that makes my male, my gender feel good, that, that, that was in Mexico, and that moped might as well have been a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Of course, anytime I can stand on a rock or be taller, I always do that to be higher and taller. And then, of course, one of my favorite is my Michael Landon, who was an actor here in the United States. But I call that my Michael Landon look. Um, you can't see my breasts. Uh, pretty buff and gender expression male. 
Halloween, what can I tell you? My favorite holiday. I get to dress like a boy character. So in this case, I'm with my partner uh, dressed for Day of the Dead as a male. There I am, my younger self, with my German Shepherds. I always had German Shepherds because they made me feel butch and tough. But anytime I could, I'd put on tattoos, etc. cetera. Um, even as a Boy Scout, with my Girl Scout, anytime I had a chance, even as a nerd, <laughs> I get to be uh, a male at Halloween. How did I know? How did I discover I was transgender? Well, before I discovered that I was, first I had to become a really, really great actor. I could have won the Academy Award. So from ages 5 to 12, well, I just modeled my behavior as a girl after other girls. I played with dolls, did all the things girls were supposed to do, even though I didn't like it. I wanted to be my brother's. As a teenager, I basically acted as a cisgender, heterosexual woman. Remember, I'm acting here. And then in college and as a young adult, I thought, well, okay, I will, I'll be cisgender and I'm a lesbian. That was like a little bit closer, but it still didn't feel right coming out, quote, as a lesbian woman. But then at age 44, 44, I want you to think about how many years old that is. I was watching a show on Lifetime, and oh my gosh, the light bulb went off, the fireworks were playing. The show was about transgender people, and I finally, at age 44, discovered why I felt gender dysphoria all of my life. I am a transgender person. So after all these years, finally embracing who I was, yep, very affirming, finally, telling my family about it, my friends. But guess what? When I shared this with others, they didn't get it. They still, well, I won't say so much anymore. In the last three years, I finally came out again. But what happened was I went right back into the closet because people were like, oh, Shelly, you're going through a phase, da 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 it was very minimized, minimizing. So I went back into the closet for another 20 years. So here we are now, age 64. I finally came out, wrote my fourth book, shared my story, because it really, the bottom line is, isn't about me. That's my book. It's on Amazon. But it's not about me. It's really about using my gifts as an educator and a business person to help raise awareness and money and to be an example for others because you only have one shot on this earth to make a difference and I believe that's why I'm here to help others, parents, educators, businesses, business owners. So what I've done is, of course, I've created gender help companies and nonprofits create gender inclusive environments. I do speaking and training to help teachers, companies, organizations understand. I do consulting. I don't think businesses realize when you misgender people, whether it's businesses, retail businesses, or medical establishments, when you misgender people, you are definitely affecting the bottom line. And sometimes that's all businesses understand is their bottom line profits. So I try and stress that, although Honestly, it's really about making a difference and helping people understand what gender is because transgender people are at an extremely high risk to be bullied, sexually assaulted, and attempt suicide. The numbers are just staggering and unacceptable. The Centers for Disease Control released data that show that transgender and gender nonconforming youth 35% are bullied and 35% have attempted suicide in the past 12 months. You can read more about this report at this link when you get the presentation. But that is just unacceptable. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to be doing this work till the day I leave the earth because it's just unacceptable. And it all has to do with education. According to the National Center for Transgender Equality, I'm going to show you some of the statistics in the workplace. 
50% of transgender workers have faced adverse effects, 44% passed over for a job, 23% denied promotions, 26% were fired for being trans, three in four have experienced workplace discrimination. If you know anybody I can bring this work to to help raise education and of course get paid and then share those dollars with LGBT homeless youth nonprofit, I would really appreciate the referral. And you can learn more about some of the coursework I bring out at springboardworks forward slash diversity dash inclusion. All right, how can you make a difference? Well, you can start with pronouns. There's a really good read from the New York Times on why using they as a singular gender neutral profound pronoun is easy and important. They is the universal and purely neutral. When people encounter it, they infer nothing about gender. This makes singular they a perfect pronoun. Those are my pronouns as well. It's flexible, inclusive, unobtrusive. It mitigates the risk of misgendering people. And in most circumstances, it's perfectly coherent in sentences. Here are categories of pronouns, if you will. She and he and examples to go with them and of course they and them and then z and zer and her but singular they is in the use of they can be used as the singular and then of course neo pronouns like z and zer and her are neo pronouns more modern pronouns used by people who, whose gender lies outside, outside the male female binary Here's an example using myself. Shelley presented to a diversity group last week on gender neutral pronouns. They were open and honest about the difference we can make for a transgender gender fluid person. Their call to action was to be aware and ask what names and pronouns people prefer. Bring Shelley to their to tell their story to your organization. So it's just a matter of replacing those binary pronouns with they or them or their. I found this really cool site that lets you practice with pronouns. You'll be able to click on that link and it's just a place where you can do these exercises like fill in the blank and use these different pronouns to help you get comfortable using them. Now, the cool thing on Facebook, I've been teaching Facebook to businesses for, as I mentioned, about 13 years now. Facebook, when you sign up for Facebook and you set up your profile, you can go in and you set up your gender and select custom and start typing in TRA for trans, and you'll see the many choices you have. You can even go in and type something with a G and start typing gender and you'll see all the different choices on Facebook for gender and I salute them for this. Every company should have these options in my humble opinion. They even go so far as to ask what pronoun do you prefer? Yay! And it's pretty simple. They keep it simple. It's either her, him, or them. Now, there's many different organizations out there. Um, this was a library association of law libraries. They had ribbons that you could put when you registered for the convention. Um, Vanderbilt has name tags where they added pronoun, people's pronouns choices onto their name tag. I just worked a show. Yes, that's me with those sunglasses, but um, I, my booth had uh, bands that I give out that pronouns they, them, there, or she, or, or he that I give out at any uh, shows that I work. And what you can do to be an ally is just add your pronouns to your LinkedIn profile and your email signature and also just ask what pronouns people prefer when you meet them or when you're doing an intake or when they're coming into your store. This is my uh, LinkedIn profile. You can see I added my profiles, pro pronouns after my name on my profile page on LinkedIn. And then my Outlook, my signature when I send out an email, it pronouns right there, they, them. 
So two simple things you can do. Another tip if you want to do this is you could add pronouns to your business card after your name. And then as you're out there, introduce yourself with your pronouns. Hi, my name is Shelly. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and their. Most people, they'll go, what? <laughs> but it gives you an opportunity to educate. Again, some of the other things you can do to be an ally, just be aware. Get involved. Speak out. Include gender diverse people in discussions and then take on the work of inclusion. Yeah, it's work because sometimes we forget. My friends call me she and then they apologize and correct themselves. Think about your language and be willing to correct others as well as be apologetic accept others when they make a mistake and stay educated about the news. You can sign up to my um, newsletter that I send out. Of course, I'd love you to bring me in to teach gender non-binary at your company and why pronouns matter. If you go to ShellyRoth.com and you can join our Facebook group right there or sign up for our newsletter to stay aware of what's happening. Something else I created that I use every time I go to a restaurant or to a drugstore, it's called the tip card, and you can download it. It's the size of a postcard. You can download it at ShellyRoth.com and put your own name on it. But I'm trying to change the world one pronoun at a time. So I leave this tip card, and basically is I leave it with my tip when I'm at a restaurant, and it says, hey, thanks for your service. Please use gender neutral pronouns like they and them and their. Use non specific alternative instead of uh, girls or ma'am or folks. Excuse me, you can use folks or my friends or you all. So it's kind of a, a cool thing to have when you're out there and somebody does misgender. It helps to me change the world one pronoun at a time. We are coming up October 17th on the second annual International Pronouns Day. You can check out Pronouns Day on their Facebook page. It's a closed group. And you can see all the upcoming events. There's my event that I'll be doing on October 17th. And you can learn more at pronounsday.org. Second annual Pronouns Day coming up. Some policy ideas for your organization. I'd first ask you, does your organization have any policies for gender non-conforming? So if everybody could take a minute and in the chat box um, let me know, yes, your organization does have policies, no, they don't, or number three, just put number three, we're considering, or number, f number four, what does that even mean? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'd say most companies and organizations are, what does that even mean? It's pretty simple. It's really, how are you, not only employees, how are you going to, if you're interfacing, whether it's a, a phone support line, people walking in your door, how are you going to interface with people? Restaurants are my biggest pet peeve because I spend a lot of money going out to dinner and when they misgender me, it affects whether I want to give them a, t a good, really good tip. So um, thank you for your input. I see there are some uh, number twos, number, I don't have any number ones, number fours, so something to consider. So here's some ideas for you. Frontline communication tips, and these, these were from the National LGBT Health Education, so they can be used in really any industry, but when addressing customers, patients, avoid using gender terms like sir or ma'am. Just keep it neutral. How may I help you today? When talking to coworkers about patients or customers, avoid pronouns and other gender terms. Use gender neutral words and phrases such as they. Your patient is in the waiting room, your customer is in the, in the office, or they are here for their three o'clock, not she or he is here for their three o'clock. Politely ask people, what name and pronouns do you prefer? What name would you like us to use? How would you like to be addressed? Keep it neutral. If you make a mistake, no big deal. Just apologize and move on. Don't make a big deal about it. Some other ideas, 
create and follow a protocol for noting people's preferred names and pronouns on your intake forms. Have an area for that. Have a clear line of communication. Maybe somebody on your staff that's responsible for setting procedures. And then, of course, you've got to get training. It's not going to be automatic, and you're going to have to get retrained. It's hard to change old habits. What's the expression, old habits die hard? Ask open-ended questions. Here's some examples. Instead of like, are you married? Do you have grandkids? Who's in your family? Who's important? Instead of closed questions like, is this your spouse or son or daughter? Just, I'd love to hear about these people. Don't make assumptions. And as Bob Dylan sang, the times, they are a-changing. New York just this year made, a, made it effective. New York uh, State Certificate of Birth. Now they've added an X. You can read the article there, male or female or check X. Non-binary teachers, teachers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania are embracing the honorific, I guess it is uh, honorific MX. The University of Texas Health Center on their intake form, you can see sex, male, female, transgender. I'd like to see them change that over time or add non-binary. Just leave it simple. United Airlines, I was checking in for a flight. There it was. I got so excited. Female, male, undisclosed, unspecified options. 2017, Oregon started the charge. They legally recognized a third gender and granted non-binary status. The District of Columbia here in the States offered the gender neutral choice of X on driver's license. And last year, California passed a bill that recognized a third gender. You can read more about it at that link. Coming in Hawaii, Next year, they're going to offer non-binary option to the driver's license. New York offered it this year. And something that made me really happy during the Super Bowl in 2018, Coca-Cola had an ad. You can watch the video there. And during the ad, the Twitterverse blew up because they were using um, generic Hold on, I have a pop-up here on my screen. There we go. They were using generic pronouns during the video ad, and the Twitter verse went crazy. Hey, Coca-Cola acknowledge they, them pronouns, et cetera, et cetera. So check it out. Even Miss Manners had a question about pronouns, and the last time I checked, there were over 500 comments on a gender-neutral question. So you can click on that link and see more. And again, if you want to keep up to date, you can go to ShellyRoth.com and click on our Facebook group, join our private group on Facebook, or sign up for our newsletter. Some of the coursework out there that I bring, uh, Gender 101 is probably my most popular, and out there telling my story, Don't Call Me Ma'am, Living in a World Without Labels, and helping on consulting with policy creation keeping in mind that all proceeds from my gender work go to the glbthomeless.org Association for Family and Community Integrity. Now, I want you to remember that love is love. That's all we can be. Treat others as you want to be treated. We're all souls on the earth trying to do the best we can. Love thy neighbor. And please, folks, don't ask questions that you wouldn't want asked of you. Easiest way to find me is at Shelley Roth. You can click on my events tab and see what's coming. If you're in Houston, I have a LinkedIn class coming up as well as a webinar on email marketing and gender non-binary coming up in the next six weeks. So let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to take some questions from you folks. Also know when you get this, you'll see a whole section with Lots of videos and resources you'll be able to access in the slides that I send you after this recording is done processing. So if we could, um, let's take some questions right now. I'll keep the recording going.
Let me go ahead and expand. You all are very welcome. Um, I appreciate you being here and investing the time to learn. That makes me feel really good. I'd be interested to know um, if you guys are self-employed or what companies you're with, just to see what kind of businesses. You could just tell me generically your business if you don't want to share your business company name. I'd be curious uh, who we have in the house. All right, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording so we can um, this real quick. Um, I'm here for anybody that wants to talk. You can email me and we'll set up a time. Uh, if you have somebody in your family and you're questioning, I talked to a, a grandfather last week that just wanted to, a better understanding of how to deal with their grandchild. Um, any way I can help email me sroth at shellyroth.com happy to be there for you and with any questions comments or just be a sounding board so okay everybody we're going to go ahead and thank you again for being here we're going to end the meeting for everybody and um hope to see you online either in the newsletter or on our facebook group